a little short summary of my thought today. Uh, first, we had something. We started with an uh, intracranial pressure increase of Stefan Neumeier, a nuclear physicist professor that I knew in my childhood. So I have different things. Uh, basically, the principle was to increase uh, the level of saline contents in the body comparatively to the brain beyond the blood-brain barrier. You know, so we need something that would pass the blood-brain barrier, ideally not the rest. It, we could increase mineral contents in the body, you know, uh, with something that would not cross the blood-brain barrier or something that would be inside of the blood-brain barrier and, you know, that would basically reduce saline contents, NAC and so on. Uh, could try to reduce overall saline contents, potentially heating or cooling, changing pressure, so HBO or kind of leveling or something like that. We consider all these kind of uh, things. You know, and uh, also potentially kind of getting water out of the body by uh, inducing some sort of whole like state, you know, and excreting more fluid to basically get more fluids out of the system. So this is just uh, thoughts I was having. Then we went over to basically Xenin, and Xenin having a... Um, uh, fluorescent abilities would be the explaining factor why sheening would uh, uh, effectively one of the only uh, remedies for yellow fever and, and other infectious diseases because it seems to basically in that role of pigment or in the uh, virology be a form of antibiotic that would use a sort of uh, phytotherapy to destroy uh, uh, microbes and using very powerful UV radiation so uh, then I went to another chapter in which I basically examined the uh, yellow lichen and other lichen in Iceland that are uh, specifically yellowish in a red volcano crater and uh, where the water is blue and green which basically leads to the assumption there might be high copper levels in there and the assumption that yellow lichen might have a superb effect on detoxifying uh, copper, therefore, you know, because they survive in a very copper rich environment, what well, copper would lead to uh, hepato hepatological syndromes, the liver being depository for copper and get, uh, getting sick from high copper doses, and uh, also looking at all the other symptoms of copper again in the beer buff. And uh, considering the role of copper and all this. So, uh, considering what other kind of lesions, what color lesions would basically have those effects, what lesions would be originally uh, symbionts of men, in, in early men in Sweden, and so and would have curative effects, and what lesions might be symbionts of other subspecies uh, of the biosystem that are not men. Then I uh, went over to the wells, basically, and the thought that. Um, these hot wells might uh, really have been bubbles of life uh, in the Ice Age, uh, points of survival for for species there in the Ice Age. Uh, so the only and basically they were very mineral rich. Orangutans seem to be closer to humans already than uh, the macaquen uh, apes, and uh, that I found in Nihon and those. Wells, and uh, they are also very red hair, so there would be another indication that they might have been living in this wells also to survive, and also the fact that they basically kind of might be hill creatures because of uh, their red hair and their ability to, and volcano creatures, and uh, the idea that gorillas basically principally breed on um, hillsides, you know, so uh, this might be a further indication. An association between volcanic uh, volcanoes, volcanic activity like wells, and the presence of simians and their closeness to the red hair. That might be a direct indicator that they're very closely related and might have spread after the ice age all over the place. Uh, so this was another thought in that direction. Uh, these were a couple of thoughts on what leeches should be domestic commercially harvested or kind of bred or uh, what would be like the actual principles of this leech and it would be simply like 
you know, and then also these, and then the idea that plants and uh, butterflies and, and so on that are red and orange might be strong depositors of iron, mineral salts, and poisons, and might a kind of be kind of toxic and virologically interesting as a symbiont, and b also help on the other hand to detoxify and desalinate uh, regular plant matter so that they would be um, more proper for mass consumption. You know, A kind of cleaning the biosystems of highly toxic salts and B making them selectively available for curative purposes if uh, higher life forms or mammals require them. And in how so far that is basically a direct effect. Uh, these are deposited there and in how so far there are enzymes that cause this and how so far the enzymes and salts can be used uh, for curative purposes. The enzymes to detoxify organic areas in the body that have an increased toxicity due to uh, pathological processes. Yeah, that's um, then the assumption how so far Bernie's brain has advanced, and we should make little cards with all these solutions and lay them out on the ground. And how so far a computer system should currently also be able to draw this conclusion on its own and then how so far it would be required to change in order to draw higher level associations, maybe deductive associations that cannot be directly logically like if you had this kind of cards point out, but they would have like higher computational cards connecting different associations with more complex complex uh, um, patterns, you know. So invent some sort of multi-dimensional thing in which several cards might be connector cards up to six or so it would be in Bach would be adjoined to basically to higher levels of cognition and deduction like an genius human invention and deduction